Welcome to the Suzy Boots Inspiration Podcast, where our mission is to bring you uplifting and empowering messages that will inspire miracles in your own life. Whether you are developing your spiritual awakening, setting new goals, or attracting more joy in your life, the first step in your journey begins now. Hello, miracle workers, and welcome to another episode. Thank you so much for joining me today as we delve into really discovering how to tap into your own wealth blueprint. This is such an exciting topic for me, and I hope it is for you too, because I think so many of us have gotten lost in the world today, and we start searching for abundance but we're not quite sure what that means. So we tend to ask our neighbors, our family, our friends about their version of values of abundance and and the amount of money that they feel is successful. And we tend to create our own standards off of other people's opinions. But I think so often, because the concept of money isn't necessarily taught generation to generation, I think so much illusion goes into feeding our souls the wrong information. And when I wrote The Wealth Blueprint, tapping into the abundance within, I literally closed my eyes, as I do with all my other books, and asked God to talk to me and tell me about my wealth blueprint. And every word that I heard being downloaded into my mind, I wrote out verbatim. And this book, as have Through the Eyes of Truth and Creating Utopia, was written from my answered prayers. So when I refer to my books, I always have to remind you that these were my answered prayers. If something I say does not resonate with you, then it's not your truth. But if there's one little thing that you get through being brought to these podcasts from reading my books or even from coaching with me, then that's the one thing that you were meant to connect to so you can discover something within yourself and be able to expand your energy and become a greater version of who you are. So when I look at today's topic, which is seeking a solution through an illusion, I think this is so indicative of how we feel, so many of us feel when it comes to money, wealth, or abundance of anything. I can remember as a little girl, absolutely loving these dolls called the Sunshine Family. And that probably tells you my age because the Sunshine Family came out probably, oh, let's just say a very long time ago. And I saved my money and saved my change and finally got to go to the store. So excited. And I got the entire Sunshine family, purchased them, came home. And as I was playing with them, I was so, so excited. And I remember my mom walking into my bedroom because she had taken me to the store to go get this purchase. And she told me that my cousin Molly was going to be coming to visit. So I continued to play and go back into my little world of imagination with the Sunshine family. And when my cousin arrived, we started talking and she said, oh my gosh, I absolutely love those dolls. The very first thing I did was give her the Sunshine family. And even as I gave them to her, my heart literally just sank. And it's as if I was watching my body do something that my spirit did not actually want to do. And it was such a conflicting feeling that even to this day, it makes my heart really sad when I think about it. And I thought to myself, why in the world? Would I have given away something that I loved so much to somebody who really I didn't have a great relationship with, but was just kind of a casual family acquaintance. And I can recall 
The moment I decided to give them to her, she looked so pretty in her outfit. She looked so put together and just a version of somebody I really wanted to look like as a little girl. And at that moment, I thought, if I can get her to like me by giving her my sunshine family, then maybe I'll get to feel a little bit more like her. And all that did was literally just crush me because when she took the Sunshine family home, my mom even asked me, where are your dolls? And I told her I gave them away. And she just gave me this look of complete confusion and mumbled something like, I will never understand you (laughs) and turned around and walked out of the room. And I remember sitting there feeling so incredibly sad because it took me so long to save the money to purchase that family, those dolls. And it meant so much to me that when she walked out of the room, I did not get from her the feeling that I had hoped for. I didn't get the, oh, Susie, you're so amazing. Thank you so much for giving this to me. I didn't get any of that. And because I had needed that so badly from her that I gave away something that I cherished so much and just had the chance to get to experience, it literally just sent me into such sadness. I was depressed for probably the entire week. And even as I sit here and share this with you today, I can remember just the feelings of being so, so devastated and so crushed not only because she didn't give me the praise and the kudos and the confidence I was looking for from her, but because I gave something away that was of value to me. And I look at this topic of seeking a solution through an illusion. And I know as an adult, there's so many other examples that I can share, but this one in particular left a really almost a little scar in my spirit, but one that I've been able to turn into a really great lesson. And that lesson being that I cannot expect another person to give me something that I am capable of giving myself. And I may give away things that are of value to me, but it just means that I gave away something of value. Now, how many of us actually do this? Look at the things that you really find valuable in your life. Because remember, wealth does represent money, but it also represents abundance. It represents abundance of resources that you have claimed and created from within you. Whether it is money, whether it's it's your favorite outfit, whether it's your your compliments, whether it's your energy, whether it's your body, whatever it is, this is of value to you. And you need to be able to treat it with the greatest value and respect possible. Because once you start giving that away, you literally devalue it. You devalue yourself in the process because it means something to you. So when you look for a solution through the world of illusion, you've got to stop and ask yourself, are there repeating patterns in my life that I am finding myself doing that really are no longer serving me anymore? And I think money really represents a lot of this to so many people. I know One person in particular who has grown children and is constantly giving away her money because their grown children feel entitled to it. And whether the solution she is trying to obtain is self-love, whether it's more control over her children's life, or whether it's just a feeling of being valued, that goes away as soon as the money is spent because they come back and ask for more. And as you and I both know, the more you give something away, the less of it you have. 
So if you're being drawn to this podcast today, maybe there's something in your life that you feel you're trying to find a solution for, but you're looking at that solution into the world of illusion. Think about it. You are capable of creating so much and so many magnificent things. And I think we tend to get lost in the world of patterns and repetition. I know I have. I have been working out consistently for the last three years and I'll develop muscle and then I'll lose muscle and then I'll develop muscle and then I'll lose it again. And I really don't make a ton of progress, at least of what I saw on the outside. I'm built small. I am not the kind of person because of my diet and my stomach issues that really can gain a lot of muscle and a lot of weight. So I had to stop comparing myself to the people who were really just making leaps and bounds in the gym past me. And I had to start asking myself, what is this you are trying to create? What is the feeling? What is the emotion that you're trying to experience? Because I was trying to lift heavier and heavier weight. I was trying to eat carbohydrates that my body just cannot process. So I was making myself sick. And talk about seeking a solution through an illusion. I really had started tapping into that these last couple of years because I wanted so much to be able to look like some of the other people who were developing their muscles that I stopped taking into account that my body may not be built to put on that kind of muscle. So I had to start looking for a solution through the eyes of truth. And I had to take a step back and say, God, show me what this situation looks like through your eyes. And when I did that, I realized that although I've not been gaining a lot of muscle, I've been gaining strength. I've been getting stronger. So God spoke into my soul and said, why don't you celebrate that instead? And I decided at that moment that I was going to celebrate three years of working out, not by entering a fitness competition, which was primarily my main goal to begin with, but to be able to do something that I never thought I could do. So I decided that I wanted to set a goal this month to pull a two-ton truck. Again, I'm 113 pounds compared to a two-ton truck. However, (laughs) when God says that I've become stronger, I also have to understand that I'm a three-dimensional being like you are. I've become stronger on a physical level. However, I've also become stronger on a mind level and on a soul level. So I had to ask myself, If you want to pull this truck, what is it that you have to start doing to be able to make this a reality? And suddenly the solution stopped being go to the gym, eat more carbs and make yourself sick. Suddenly it shifted and that mindset went within. And I started having more conversations with God. I started meditating consistently again. I started listening for my God whispers throughout the day. I stopped following everything on social media that said I should look a certain way when in fact it was just people celebrating the strength and the the momentum that they've gained through their own physical journey. So I had to shift my mindset and say, you know what, you get to celebrate this with them, but you get to do something that you were built to do. You get to look within yourself and say, there is a vision, something that I get to celebrate. And although it may not look like everybody else's, it's going to mean the world to me. So as I continued to go to the gym and work out with my friend, 
I started getting more and more this, this feeling that I needed to do this truck pull now because I had watched my friend, a, a, a video that she showed me of her truck pull and it was last year. And I realized that once God puts a vision into your heart, your job is to start connecting the dots, start aligning within yourself to reach that vision. But you also need to manifest this and make yourself stronger. So I started upping the weights and I started eating cleaner and I started visualizing this more and more and more. And I kept telling myself, okay, you are 113 pounds and this truck is not going to lose weight and you're probably not going to gain much more. So how are we going to make this work? And my friend had suggested that we practice with her 3,400 pound car. And suddenly 3,400 pounds did not seem as intimidating as a two ton truck. So we set a day, we set a date the week after we had really spoken about this. And um, she said, let's do this on, let, let's plan on doing this next week. Let's train for it. Let's get enough recovery between your leg workout for the truck pull and let's see where you're at. And we won't tell anybody. We will just go out to the field and we will do it together to see where I'm at strength wise. So for the last two to three weeks, I have been visualizing and I have to remember what God shows me in a vision tells me that it is already done. I don't have to find a solution for pulling a truck. My job is to go within and align with being the strongest version of myself as well as being the strongest version of myself on a physical level. So I had to take all of these God whispers and all of this knowledge and really just open myself up and be receptive to God and say, okay, God, so what is this going to feel like? Because in all honesty, the very first tug is going to scare me the most because I'm going to realize that I am trying to pull a very heavy vehicle that I physically may not be capable of doing. However, if God already put it in my heart that I wanted to pull this truck, then it has to be done, right? So I started going within and I kept listening to my God whispers and I realized I cannot look at it in the terms of finding a solution through an illusion. The illusion is that this truck as being a two-ton truck is going to be extremely difficult to pull, especially at my weight and size. So the solution had to come from within me. And I remembered that we are all energy. At the core of our being, we are energy. And energy doesn't begin or end. It merely just changes form. So as I started to visualize pulling her 3,400 pound car, I kept telling myself over and over again, you are energy. This car is energy. It is not pulling against you. This car is moving with you. And I had to take myself every day in meditation into the space of being one with the car. And I started to feel it more and more. And as I kept telling myself, you are pure energy. Nothing is separate from you, including this car. So it will move with you. It will start to move with you and it will feel easy. As you're moving this car and pulling the car, it's going to feel easier and easier. And I kept visualizing and telling myself this until I could really feel the excitement of pulling the car. So this last week, my friend and I decided, okay, let's just go pull the car and see where we're at with my strength. And we went out to the field and she put me into the harness and hooked up her car. 
and did the sweetest things that she always does, which is give me a great pep talk and told me how to start and took a couple of pictures and said, okay, go ahead and pull it. And of course, I pull it as hard as I can. My feet give out from underneath me on the loose gravel and I kind of fall, <laughs> barely missing my teeth about three inches from the pavement. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this wasn't the best idea ever, but I could hear her cheering me on. And again, I'm like, okay, I can do this. So I jump back up to my feet, start pulling. And again, it doesn't feel like it's moving. And then I told myself, wait, you're trying to find a solution through this illusion. You're trying to pull a car that you think is separate from you. Go back to what you know. And I took a deep breath and I closed my eyes and I started saying my mantra over and over again. You are pure energy. This car is pure energy. It is not moving against you. It is moving with you as one. And I can remember just saying that over and over again. And I opened my eyes and stared at the pavement and I started to smile because I remember how good it felt in my meditation to pull this car. And before you know it, my friend started screaming, the car is moving, you're doing it, you're doing it. And I looked at my legs and I realized my legs were starting to move. Mind you, they weren't moving fast, but they were moving one in front of the other. And I kept telling myself, this car is easy. It's the easiest thing to pull. I can't believe how easy it feels to pull this car. And as I was saying that over and over again, just like I had in my visualizations, I felt the car and I just wanted to start running with it. Of course, I didn't, but I did start pulling it faster and walking faster with it as if it was effortless. And it was the most incredible feeling to know that I could pull this car, not because I had suddenly become so incredibly strong, but because I found the solution outside of the illusion. I went within and had a conversation with God about what I was capable of. I went within and remembered everything that I have learned through my prayers and through my God whispers that I am one with that very thing that is seeking to be one with me. How powerful is that? Everything is connected because we are all connected through the power of God. And I remember being so grateful at that moment because I kept telling God prior to this, if I can become one with a 3,400 pound car and have it move with me, then imagine what I can do to help other people step out of their fear. If I can become one with a 3,400 pound car and have it move with me and alongside then imagine what I can do with just pure energy of helping another person literally take one step in front of the other, in front of the other, out of their fear. So moving this car was one of the most empowering feelings I've ever had because I got to see the greater picture of really what it was I was trying to accomplish. Now, if I can do something that's completely out of my comfort zone, so can you, because we're all created by the same God. We're all connected, and we all soar on the same set of wings. The moment you stop seeing yourself separate is the moment you stop opposing that greatest miracle that God is putting in your life. It's the moment you start to look into the direction of this miracle instead of turning away from it and convincing yourself that you cannot. You have to stop looking for a solution in the world of illusion and start looking for that solution which is already within you, just waiting to be experienced. So we're going back this Saturday and I'm going to pull this two-ton truck. 
And I realized, yes, it's an extra thousand pounds. And as my mindset is starting to get a little bit concerned, I'm like, that seems like a lot of weight, Susie. However, I'm visualizing every single day the same way. This truck is not separate from me, but it is one with me. You are not separate from me, but you and I are connected through pure energy. The greater I can uplift your spirit, the greater I can lead you into knowing how phenomenal you are and stepping out of your fear and starting to accomplish those dreams that have been hidden in your soul for so long, the higher you're going to soar. And the higher you soar, the more you expand that energy, then you're able to reach somebody who you will never, ever, ever know. And that's how you begin that ripple effect that creates change. It doesn't have to be with 50 million people. It just needs to begin with you. So I would love to close this by reading you a chapter out of my book, The Wealth Blueprint, Tapping into the Abundance Within. And this chapter is titled Seeking a Solution Through an Illusion. And I would love for you to just sit back and drink your coffee or keep driving to your location and just open your mind and your heart and your soul and ask yourself, if God was trying to share a message with me, what message would that be? Souls use their hands to play an instrument to glorify their creator. Many use the power of their voice to sing their love to God and glorify my name. My child, you use your hands to transcend time and distance that would create a separation from me. Yet you know me on a soul level. You understand that you and I are one and through our oneness will you connect to your greatness. Yet you do this not alone, but through me. How can you imagine your world apart from me when every breath you take and every moment of your existence you are living in the physical journey connected as one soul with me? You believe the illusion the world has convinced you of that although you see me not in the physical plane, that I cease to exist as one with you. If you would take the moments of energy that you spent connecting with the world around you through staring at your cell phones and computers, you would realize that you are co-creating this disconnect. Yet all the while you blame me for our separation when I am within you calling you into your own soul to commune with me. What is it you seek to know, my child? What do you desire to experience on a soul level when you turn your eyes and ears and separate our connection? Why do you desire to be apart from your creator and seek only relationships within a world of illusion? This relationship which you seek fulfills you not, yet you continue to seek love and self-empowerment from others who are just as empty and seeking the same. When will you cease from the cycle you're creating and ask me for the guidance you need to discover your path? My beautiful and precious children, you know in your heart where truth resides, then falsehood cannot exist. You have become comfortable in your world of illusion, even though it creates fear within you. Your soul craves to know the truth of itself and it seeks the growth of your own expression of self through your hands. Whether your hands create love, music, or words, you are the creator of your own experience. Do you not understand that wealth is a concept and a state of being? Many experience wealth in relationships and meaningful deep love, and when they are in that moment of bliss, they seek not to replace it with money. When a mother holds her child and feels the emotional connection of that which she has created within, she seeks not to replace her child with the feeling of holding money. 
So how can you covet wealth as something so important where you seek to replace the relationship in your own life with money? You insist this is not truth, yet ask yourself, how much time do you dedicate to being in the moment to enjoy the relationships and true love I have blessed you with? If you continue seeking something outside of yourself that you believe will be answered by money, then you will continue to seek an illusion. The wealth that you seek is already within you. And no amount of external activities will replace what your soul desires to know. This being the love between you and your creator. So stop seeking a solution from an illusion. Cease from attempting to convince yourself that your soul knows not what your body needs when in fact your soul is the only truth you actually experience. It doesn't change even though your experiences continue to alter your perspective of what you believe to be your truth. You open and close your eyes in the moments you seek me yet fail to believe I am with you always. You surround yourself with toxic environments and negative people, yet wonder why I fill not your heart with joy. My child, your soul knows what it needs to heal itself because I am residing within you. I seek to share truth with you through communicating to you from within. Only when you choose to ignore my voice resonating within your soul do I send you another to remind you of the glory that I have shared within you. Cease from seeking me outside of yourself, for everything you seek outside is a reflection of what you are not finding within. For your soul desires to connect with your Creator, yet you choose to ignore self and look for me in the illusion outside of you through other people or situations that you think you need. Do you not understand you have all you need within yourself? If you were to look within the walls of your own soul and listen to the sounds of your own voice, then you would unlock a treasure of boundless wealth. The kind of wealth only you value which is gold for your own opinion, silver for your love, and precious gems for your compassionate heart. You you exist in the physical world to experience being a co-creator with me. And when you choose to create from within your greatest miracles, then you connect with your own greatness. However, so often you convince yourself of the illusion I seek you not because I find you not worthy, when in fact, you are the soul who finds God not worthy enough to have an experience through love and communication. My child, I live within you through the heartfelt expression you have when blessing another with a prayer. I live within you as the sound of your beating heart when you are anxious and afraid. And I live within you as the warmth your soul undergoes when presenting your dreams to a world who has yet to embrace their own. Every act, thought, and emotion you create is an expression of me residing within you. Yet you awaken in the mornings to begin your day seeking justice through the television, fear through your relationships, and approval through the social media and the world around you. Formulate your own opinion through your own experiences so you may learn to equip yourself with the armor of wisdom and knowledge. Then you will create your experiences through what is possible rather than what is perceived as an impossibility. Your greatest expressions of self are continuously being denied by you because you fear sharing your voice with a world filled with seekers of approval rather than seekers of truth. For where truth is, falsehood cannot reside. 
so you make a choice daily through free will to silence my voice resonating within you, only to surround yourself with the noise of like-minded individuals who wish to scream louder than they listen. You choose this as your reality, and forget my voice is the reality and the world outside of self is the illusion. When will you seek empowerment by living your life and tapping into your destiny? For somehow you believe the world who is already lost within its own fear-based thoughts can lead you into your greatness? How can that be if they are in the process of seeking their own? One cannot guide another into their own blueprint, for it is a sacred, sacred contract between you and God. Cease from seeking the love you should be providing to self from another. Self-love must be accepted from self and from the resources I have bestowed upon you as a gift to reach your greatest path. For in the accepting of self will you understand you have all the wisdom you need and all of the love you seek from another. You have only to accept self and you will discover a wealth of love, wisdom, and compassion for another that will create ripples across the universe. I seek not to judge you, my child, but to know you as an extension of myself through your experiences. Just as you seek to understand who you are not, you must seek to know who you are and what you are capable of. Every soul desires to know itself as a child of God, and this is not through another's definition of what that entails, rather from your desire to be connected to me, one and the same. Set your heavy load down at the juncture where fear and loneliness reside, and choose to walk in a path of light that only I can provide for you. For in seeking your miracle, for in seeking your destiny, you will uncover your greatest potential and create what the world would consider to be a miracle. Solutions reside within you. When you tap into your glory through truth, you will realize you never walked alone and the path was always there in front of you. You had only to see it. Reach out your hand and take my hand which has been extended for you all of your life. Your journey has just begun. And this came as an excerpt from my book, The Wealth Blueprint, Tapping into the Abundance Within. You can find it on Amazon or you can visit my website at suzyboots.com. That's S-U-Z-Y-B-O-O-T-Z. -O -O so this week I challenge you to go within and start looking for your solutions through the eyes of truth. Start asking God to show you what your situation looks like so you can alter your mind mindset and shift your energy, shift your attention from not being separate from that goal that you wish to experience, but already being one with it. I'm really excited to understand how your journey is going to unfold. I'm excited to hear how your destiny is going to just start lighting up before your very eyes because you're finally looking in that direction. If you would like one-on-one -on -one personal coaching, please feel free to reach out to me as I do telephone and Zoom coaching as well as one-on-one. -on -one. But this week, see how you can push yourself. And again, if you need assistance, if you need help really gathering that action plan and shifting your mindset so you can see the end from the beginning, I would absolutely love to help you. So stay connected to your God whispers. Start seeing yourself and your life through the eyes of truth. And until we meet again next week, remember... Your journey begins with a prayer. You've been listening to the Suzy Boots Inspiration Podcast. 
You can follow Suzy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. Join us next time for another inspiring podcast with Suzy Boots. Thanks for listening.